When you have a child and you're in a situation of abuse, whether it be verbal abuse, it's just a toxic relationship. There's a lot of toxic relationships nowadays that are covered up and masked and social media beauty. Like you see relationship goals all day, but when they turn that camera off or they, you know, they um, turn the video off, it's a toxic, extremely toxic relationship. But what a lot of people don't really pay attention to are the children who are involved, um, whether they, you know, share the parents or, you know, it's a single dad who's in a new relationship with the female or whatever, you know, people just don't really recognize the impact that um, trauma from relationship drama can have on children. And I was reminded of this um, because I looked at pictures of um, my daughters and um, I looked in their eyes. And even though in those pictures they're smiling, I can see the pain in their eyes because they had to endure so much. They had to witness verbal abuse, you know, arguments, little petty things that aren't even, you know, on the magnitude of, um, you know, bad abuse. It can just be a disagreement, you know, a, a regular disagreement that is misinterpreted by a child because they have a child's mind, they have an innocent mind, and all they want to do is be happy and have fun and play, but they see their parents having a disagreement, or they may see their mother having a disagreement with the family member. You know, my children had to endure a lot, um, and I don't like to speak on the past because, um, you know, we've grown past that, but I do want to recognize it and um, acknowledge the impact that it's had on my children, not having, you know, a family that they can call, you know, having to disconnect from so many friends because we had to move and, you know, had to just relocate for, you know, not only our safety, but our well-being, Um, you know, the relationship that they are still trying to maintain with their father. And, um, you know, besides the point of the past of what happened, just single parents in general, you know, the impact that it has on a child when that child is only with one parent for the bulk of the time, you know, when they miss their mom or they miss their father. And in my case, growing up, I didn't have my mother present as present or consistent as, you know, most mothers are. I was raised by my father. So me growing up, I had the trauma of not having a consistent mother in my life. So now seeing that in my children's eyes, that they're happy, but you can look in their eyes and tell that something is missing. And I know that that's what it is. I know that it's trauma, you know, that they sometimes revisit in their dreams and it shows up as something else. It shows up as a monster or it shows up as an alligator that's chasing them or chasing me or chasing their father or chasing their friends or cousins. You know, the trauma and that drama shows up in their dreams. It shows up in their day to day. And they're so young. As we're dealing with so much nowadays with, you know, the epidemic and a lot of transition and a lot of change in the world, I stress the importance of being mindful of your children in that process. See me, I do my best to be mindful of my children the best that I can. Being a single mother, it's very challenging trying to navigate day to day for me, trying to make sure that I'm sane, that I'm happy, that I'm able to navigate through this world. And then also having the responsibility of being a full-time mother you know, not having another parent to kind of lean on, but being a full-time mother and ensuring that those children have good balance, especially after trauma. So, you know, taking them out to the parks, ensuring that they're socialized with other children, ensuring that, you know, they have ice cream, even if it's my last $5, you know, ensuring that, you know, they have good experiences and laughing with them at night, even when I'm sad, you know, giving them an extra five minutes, even when I'm tired, you know, 
looking at their photo or, or drawing of who knows what it is and just letting them know that it's beautiful because they're an artist and encouraging that artist in them instead of saying, you know, what the hell is that? You know, like, no, just, you know, encouraging them and, and, and edging them to continue forward in whatever dream or goal that they have, not shitting on their dreams because they've already been shitted on with drama. They've already been shitted on with trauma. They've already been shitted on with, you know, um, abuse that wasn't directed at them, but they picked up because of, you know, things that they observed in their life. So, um, you know, I always share my own personal experiences because I understand that a lot of people go through the same thing, but a lot of people out here on social media, they're masking all this shit. They got all masks, man. I feel like like 88% of people out here on social media are wearing a fake ass mask. And who am I to judge? Because it could have been me wearing that mask too. But I had to come to the realization that um, that shit wasn't serving me to lie about who I am, to lie about what I'm going through, to disguise that shit with beautiful swimsuit photos and bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I don't do that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm real. So I, I do that because I know that a lot of people are struggling through that too. And I and in, you know, in some in some cases I am that sacrificial lamb that puts myself out there and say, you know what? There's other people going through this too, especially me. And let me tell you how I'm going through it. And let me tell you how I'm trying to overcome that or how I'm working to overcome that. So if you're listening and you have children or if you plan on having children, because I know a lot of people out there who are just dying to be in relationships. They're like, oh my God, waiting for Prince Charming so they can hurry up and have a a child. But they haven't even healed the drama and the trauma that they have from their parents. So they're going to bring their child into an existing cycle, an existing pattern before even healing the trauma that they have from their past, that childhood inner inner child healing that's necessary to do before you even have a child. See, I didn't know I didn't know shit about that before I had a child. I had a lot of trauma that I was battling a lot of drama with my family, a lot of drama with, you know, people in my life. And I didn't realize the impact that I that that would have on the children that I would be bringing into this life. I just encourage the parents out there and the soon to be parents to be mindful and do your best because it's hard as fuck. And when people see me, they be like, "Ooh, girl, you so strong. They have the worst assumptions of me. People have the worst assumptions of me. Like I could be, I could have like two dollars in my pocket, and somebody would be like, "Oh, she balling! Oh, she balling!" You know what I'm saying? Check engine light on in my car. Oh, got the newest car. Oh, she no. Like you know what I'm saying? Like people have the worst assumptions of me, and it is what it is. I can't change that. I have a challenging life. I really do. You know, as many blessings that come into my life, there are challenges. And I'm grateful for it all. In those challenges, though, I do my best. You know, I'm not perfect, but I do my best to ensure that the next generation, you know, not only my children, but the the youth and the children that I interact with. You know, I'm around a lot of teenagers, a lot of young men and young women who are easily influenced by the energies that are around them. So I do my best to present a positive character to these individuals, to my children, and to I do my best to encourage happy times and happy moments and adventures and fun and you know laughing and joking and dancing and singing and being yourself. I do my best to encourage that because that's what we need now. You know, we got enough anger. We got enough drama. We got enough animosity. You know, if you want to have drama between your spouse, fine. Do that shit. If you want to be toxic, but don't be toxic to your children. I've seen so many children. I knew this little girl when she was four years old. She was so fun, so positive, so radiant. But she's now 12 and she don't even talk. Like this girl was gabby, yappy. This girl was so yappy. Like I would have to be like, yo, shh, be quiet when she was like four. But now... She don't even talk no more. What has she seen? You know what I'm saying? Like, 
What has this little girl seen? What has this little girl seen her mother and father go through that has shut her up? I don't want to see that no more. Like, can we try to change this cycle? Can we try to break this cycle and save these kids? If we can't save ourselves, which we should absolutely be trying to do, please let's save these kids. If you don't have kids and if you see a child struggling, mentor that child, even if it's for five minutes out of the day. You don't know how impactful you might be. You don't know. I have had so many experiences in my life that somebody, a stranger, has impacted me greatly. A five-minute conversation, a two-minute hello, a, a compliment on the street has lifted my day, has lifted my week, has lifted my year. So you don't know what you can do. Just the little things that you can do to encourage someone, especially a child, to keep going. Because you never know what these little kids are going through. And please, I'm telling y'all, please stop judging these kids. I have seen elementary school teachers and her elementary school teachers talk about their students. Talk about, oh, you know, I can't believe they came in with these raggedy ass shoes. You don't know what that kid is going through. You think he want to be wearing raggedy ass shoes? Like, I remember when I was growing up very poor, and I, I don't know what the fuck I was wearing. I had wore the same jeans almost every day, and I heard my supposed friends talking about me. Oh, she wearing them jeans again. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit scarred me. I'm 39, and I still remember that shit. Like, imagine the, the wounds that you're putting into these children when you're talking about them, when you're downing them. If that, if that child in your class has raggedy-ass shoes, give him some fucking shoes. Talk to his mama or whatever or fucking buy him some fucking shoes. Talk to a nonprofit or something to help these kids out here to grow and to and to be their a better version of themselves. If their parents can't be good leaders, we as community members have to step in and be leaders. It takes a village. Like we still are a village. Let's be a village again for these kids. Fuck these adults. I'm tired of these fucking adults. I ain't trying to change these motherfucking adults. I ain't trying to counsel these motherfucking adults like that. If they want to be counseled, cool. But these babies are very impressionable. These children are literally our future. We have to step in and guide them in a positive manner. In a non judgmental manner, in a loving manner, in a supportive manner.